Welcome to our kitchen. I am going to cook with you the most yummy, delicious meal. Okay, this is one of my favorites for lots of reasons. There are so many highs and lows in it, and that's what I love about a really good meal. I love to be able to taste such a mix of flavors. So what I'm gonna make with you are some beautiful sea scallops. Look at how gorgeous those big sea scallops are, the sweetest, yummy sea scallops. I'm gonna make my favorite cornbread, which I think you're really going to like. And we're going to take that and I'm going to make a beautiful Mediterranean butter with it that we can put on top of the cornbread and we'll serve it on a gorgeous arugula salad. And we are just going to get right in here because this is going to be such a good dinner. Okay, I just want to show you one thing. Um, I have got in a 400 degree oven my favorite pan. And I just have to show you my favorite pan. This is my favorite pan because it was my grandmother's. Um, my grandma Lucy, and it's a cast iron pan, and um, I'm gonna put it back in the oven, but I just had to show you. This thing is great because I cook with it all the time, and it's my favorite, favorite way woo, to make um, cornbread. And you know what, if you don't have a cast iron pan, don't worry about it, your cornbread is still gonna be wonderful. But I like to put that in the oven first and get it nice and hot, and then when I get my fat in there, which is going to be some bacon drippings, don't ever throw your bacon drippings away because they make such good lusciousness in your cornbread. Then I'll pour it all in and everything will get nice and hot and it'll brown it really beautifully. So first I'm going to take um, all of my um, ingredients and just throw them into a big bowl. So I've got some sour cream and I do kind of some twists on my cornbread. Um, now I'm well aware <laughs> that a lot of people are not interested in doing twists on their cornbread but you guys know me by now enough to know that, you know, I cannot not mess with everything. It's just kind of my way. I just have to kind of take things and then I kind of keep making them my own. Um, I've got buttermilk. I think buttermilk is one of the greatest things in cornbread. To me, it sort of makes the cornbread. I just think it's so interesting. Um, and then what I also have are some canned green chilies. You know, this is the kind of thing, if that's not um, your taste, not problem. You know, I love them in there. I think they make it really, really interesting. So I'm just going to whisk this up. And um, what I love about cornbread is it's truly the kind of thing you can make any night of the week to go with your dinner. I use um, a medium grind um, cornmeal. I just think it's the best. You'll find that there's like a fine grind and then you can get a coarse grind. But I think the medium grind is, you know, sort of the, uh, you know, Mama Bear of the Bunch just kind of works out the best. Um, so there you have it. I've got all of that wonderfulness together. Um, and now I'm going to just take my dry ingredients. So again, this is the cornmeal. This is about two cups of cornmeal. Um, and then I put in a little bit of salt. I think salt is always really important. A um, little baking powder, a couple tablespoons of sugar. I know you might be cringing again that I'm putting sugar in it, but really, I love it that way. And I know a lot of people don't even put flour um, in their cornbread, but I always put a little bit of flour. Um, I just think it is a little bit more interesting with it. So then I'm just going to combine my dry ingredients very quickly here. And then I'm just going to mix the two together. And I'm going to pour them into my uh, big, really smoking hot pan. And then we're going to pop that in the oven. And then I'm going to show you where we're going to go from there. OK, so basically, I've just got this now. You can see how pretty that is. Isn't that color just beautiful? And you can really see the grind. So I think sometimes, I know a lot of times you see fine grind in the grocery stores. Um, and you can absolutely make it with that as well. Now you want to, hang on, I'm just going to use my wooden spoon. I think it kind of does a better job because, you know, you really don't want to over mix this now. You just want to mix it just enough um, so that it's just coming together. It should feel nice and heavy. It's very beautiful. You can see the nice thing about those chilies too is they give it a little color. And again, you know me, I'm all about personalizing your food. <laughs> so this is a place where you can totally personalize. Like if you want to throw some chopped up black olives in here, yeah, wouldn't that be good? Or like some sharp cheddar cheese, go for it. That sounds so awesome to me and I'll be over at your house later. We can have a little dinner. So let me grab my grandma's pan, my big pan, and um, I get a big steam in my face. So this is the, this pan is hot, hot. You know, it's been in a 400 degree oven, and I've got my bacon fat, and this is just you know a few tablespoons. And if you don't have some bacon fat, um, 
don't worry. Just use some butter, because it's kind of going to do the same thing. All you're looking for um, is just to have some fat to swirl around in your pan so you see how quickly it melts. You know, all I want to do is just get it all around the edges of my pan. Oh, you can hear it. Oh, I wish you could smell it. Oh, it smells so good. I mean, what's the problem? Bacon fat in a cast iron pan? Yum. All right, so let me just um, put our beautiful corn bread in there. Oh, I love cornbread. I hope you love cornbread as much as I do. You guys have to email me and let me know because I just think, man, it's the greatest thing. When I was a kid and they served cornbread at school, I know the school cornbread's not always the best, but even that I thought was killer. All right, so that's it. I'm just gonna show you. You can see the fat kind of comes around on the top, but that's so great. This is gonna be so golden and beautiful. So I'm gonna pop that in the oven. And that'll be like 30 minutes, maybe a little bit longer. You just kind of have to look at it. I don't want it, you know, I want it to be nice and golden brown on the top. And, um, you know, you just want to make sure it's not sinky at all in the middle. So now I'm going to make this amazing butter and then I'm going to do the scallops because the scallops are so darn quick, you know, that's just a few minutes. So um, good thing I have this counter behind me, huh? I can keep throwing my stuff back there. Um, so this is, this butter is so cool. Here's the thing I love about this too, is again, this whole entire meal is so um, personali personalizable. So this is just room temperature butter, right? And all I did was I caramelized some onions. You know, I love those so much, I love, and I chopped them up and I caramelized them with a little bit of garlic, which is so, you know, yummy. And then um, I'm just gonna dump those lovelies in. And I've got um, Kalamata olives, you know, all chopped up. Mm. I just, I, you know, the combination of Kalamata olives and, and those onions is just crazy. And then I've got um, sun-dried tomatoes, which are amazing. You're gonna make this and you're gonna just rub it all over yourself because it's <laughs> so crazy. Some thyme, which mm, is so luscious. And then I'm even putting a little bit of honey in it so we're gonna have this really cool combination. Of course, I'm naturally eating and talking to you. We have a rule like that in the studio that you're allowed to do that because we get very excited um, about talking and eating at the same time we have lunch and you know, kind of get going. And then all I'm gonna do is just stir it up. And basically, you know, I'm making my own butter here. And uh, what's the problem with making your own butter? <laughs> But like I said, put whatever you want in it. This is just my own yummy concoction. This is quite possibly only enough for me. <laughs> and you, maybe a little bit for you. But look at this beautiful butter. What I love about this is all the different colors and all the different textures. I think that's what makes a very interesting butter. Oh, let me just hit my oven timer. And so that's basically it. I'm just gonna give it a taste. Maybe it'll need like a touch of salt, but let's just see. Oh, it is so, it's crazy, crazy good. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna jump into the scallops. Okay, my cornbread is just ready to come out of the oven and it is hot and it is beautiful and perfectly golden brown. And this is the perfect time, isn't that beautiful? See how pretty and golden it gets around the edges in a cast iron pan? For sure, worth the investment, or like ask someone in your family if they have one and they're not using it and beg them for it because it's, a, it's just a prize to have. I've got my scallops started. That's the, that's the right time to start your scallops is right when you know that your, um, your cornbread is done. You want to just start those scallops up. These are sea scallops, and they only take... You know, these are fairly good sized ski set, but look how pretty they are. I'm gonna put a little bit more wine in here. Ooh, it's, it's like I'm a magician. <laughs> so all I've got in here um, is a little bit of oil, and then I have salt and pepper, and I've got lemon juice and a little bit of white wine. So you can see I just added the white wine because I wanna just um, get all of that wonderful stuff off the bottom of the pan. You know, that's where all the goodness lies. I always tell you guys that, but really it's true. That's where all the really good stuff is. So 
So it makes all that wonderful brown sauce, which will help flavor the scallops. These scallops, I would always recommend sea scallops because they are big and juicy and sweet. They are so good and flavorful. Um, when, they sh when they actually pull them out of the ocean, they um, shuck them right on the boats because they want them to be so fresh and perfect. And they really are. And you know, when you bite into them, they're so good. But you have to be careful because they are quite easy to overcook. So, you know, I can tell, you know, when you, you can sort of hold them in your hand, and you know, feel them when they're raw and tell, okay, obviously they're uncooked. But then once they start to cook, you'll start to see them come apart a little bit at the seams. You know, you can start to see this little bit of separation. I like them to get nicely brown. I'm gonna add just the tiniest bit more wine here. And um, like I said, it's a few minutes on each side. Um, just kind of watch them. And if you're unsure of how you're doing, listen, just do this. Pull one out of the pan. This is what I do sometimes, don't ever be afraid just to, you know, just to learn as you're going. Pull one out of the pan and cut into it a little bit and you'll be able to see, oh, you know, gee, does this have a little bit further to go? You know, taste it and see, you know, really get in there with your food. These are just about ready. I can tell they just need like a few more seconds, but that's how I've learned how to really understand when food is ready. You know? try it and I think these are actually perfect mm. oh they're so sweet and good if you are afraid of cooking seafood you got to get rid of that fear because it is such a wonderful thing to do and you can see how very fast that was and literally like I said lemon juice you could put butter if you're gonna cook it a little higher heat don't use butter because butter will burn really easily use olive oil so okay I'm gonna pull this great meal together I've got some arugula I love arugula because when I was a kid, I grew up on a road called Artesian Road, and this is really true. On the road, we had this amazing artesian, an actual real artesian spring. So we would go down and we would actually pick watercress out of the um, spring, you know, two inches of water, and we'd be down there picking this spicy, incredible watercress. We'd bring big bags of it up to my mom, and then she'd float it around in the sink, and these little beetles would all swim around, and all the sand would fall down. And this is what reminds me of watercress, because I can't always get watercress right here where we live. What am I looking for right now? I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut you a piece of cornbread so you can see how amazing it is. Okay, look at this cornbread. It is perfection right now. You can see how it's pulled away from the edges of the pan. That's another good sign that it's done. And I'm just gonna pull out a piece. Oh, it smells so good and it is hot. You can see how amazing and hot it is. Ooh, look at that, pretty steep. So then what I'm going to do is let's put a great big dollop. Remember, this is that amazing butter that we made that, you know, while the camera's off, I'm of course taking little licks of it. <laughs> Oh, you guys know me well enough to know that that's how I function, but just put a whole boatload of it <laughs> on top of the bread. You just have to because truly with every bite, you have to have some of that wonderfulness. Then, okay, look how pretty this is going to be. A couple of these scallops on top of here. Then all I do, this is how we make dinner very often. Just a beautiful squeeze of lemon juice over this whole thing. I've got some walnut oil. If walnut oil is not something you're used to, my grandmother always had walnut oil in her refrigerator. Whoop, a little too much there. Just a bit of that, some salt over the whole thing, some pepper. It's such a beautiful light meal. And then I'm even going to do this. I'm just going to flip these two guys out of the pan and get them out of my way because I have to tell you, and I know you're going to always hear this from me, these pan juices are so killer. I'm just going to pour a little bit of those right on top here. And it's just perfect with the arugula and everything. Is this not the meal that you want to have tonight? So let's just see how good the bite of the arugula, that spicy, wonderful bite. If arugula has too much of a bite for you, you know, mix a little spinach in with it. Mmm, mmm, to me it's perfect. Mmm, let me know what you think about this meal after you've eaten the whole thing and that butter.